Hello. You're really dark today. It looks like you're hiding in the shadows. I'm dark every day. Hold on. I have to position my head because the sign behind me for the show, it's a neon sign. And if you're not watching on the YouTube channel, um, and but if I but my name is Sadie, S-A-D-I-E. So it always says die. <laughs> it's just my ginormous cranium covers the S and the A. And then so I look back and I'm like, oh, damn, <laughs> that's kind of a bummer. Die. <laughs> anyway, um, so I don't know. Maybe my son. Speaking of dying, I know that you said before that like your your six year old Murphy will will tell you sometimes like grim things like you're gonna die. My yeah. that doesn't happen very often for me. But the other day, my thirteen year old out of nowhere was like, "Hey, Dad, what happens if you die this year?" And I was like, <laughs> "Whoa, bro, what the hell?" He was like, "I was just thinking about it. I wonder." Okay, <laughs> Murphy asked this pretty regularly, and what's so upsetting is she'll be like. She never asked her dad. She never, it's like, you think he ain't going to die either? But I don't want to feed into that. So, but it's always just me. Like, what will dad and I do if you die? And I'm like, well, what would you and I do if he died? But I don't do that because I'm an adult and that would be wrong. But no, she asked me, what did she ask me the other day? It was morbid. It was about me dying again. And I'm like, could we stop? Please, even if you get, well, if you get a premonition for real, I mean, I do need to know, but yeah. I mean, it's just so morbid when your kids and Murphy m seems to think that 40 is the new 90 because <laughs> she's like, mom, take those stairs easily. We can't have you break it a hip. I'm like, but I remember when I was young and 40 was like, I remember when my sister Katie turned 40, I'm like, oh shit, you are going to die soon. <laughs> <laughs> but she's alive. Um, how are you, Sean? It's uh, Sadie and Sean have no friends brought to you by the wonderful folks at Talent Co. Real Estate. And uh, you can go to homeandnoco.com. Check out the brand new home of the week. You're just going to love it. And I got to say, Amy is just so wonderful to work with. Real estate can be overwhelming, but she'll get the job done with her wonderful team. Sean. She should... only sells houses with air conditioners because it's hot. It is hot. I don't know if that's a true fact. Don't quote Sean on that, but. <laughs> Amy, here's a business opportunity for you. If you have a house, it's really nice. Everybody wants it, but it doesn't have an air conditioner. You should just offer to put it in. I mean, what's that? Like a couple hundred, a couple thousand bucks. And <laughs> yeah, then it, like everybody's going to buy us. it for sure. That's like selling a hot dog without a bun. You put the bun on the hot dog. I know. I could just imagine, though, like someone's listening and they pick up the phone and they're like, I have a house to sell. I'm going to I'm going to do it. I'm going to call Talent Co. Real Estate. And then they hear Sean say she doesn't sell houses without condition. <laughs> Air conditioners. Okay, and the, sorry. the guy's slowly hanging up the phone like bummer. I digress. I made all of that up. Amy's great. Amy, if you'd like to get into the air conditioner talks, I can help you out. But if you don't, I get it. <laughs> okay, so should we? I have to tell this story because I've been laughing about it. I just told Ryan upstairs about yesterday. I'm in this weird like zone of like organizing stuff. So cabinets and and can I tell you something? Somebody wrote, made a comment and they're like, "Oh, look at Sean pretending to care about being there." <laughs> and I'm like, and I responded, "I'm like, damn." Pretending to care about what? About you being here because half the time you're staring off into space. <laughs> so I'm always like, Sean, look at me. Look at me. I need a bell like a cat. Um, I'm listening the whole time. I'm just also taking in other things. Like there's a lot of interesting things happening in this empty studio. So I have to watch them all. I bet. It's big time radio. <laughs> um, so anyway, yesterday I'm like, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go through... And I'm going to get rid of all the duplicates on my phone. So it's like for Sean, I had like four different duplicates. And so I'm like, I'm going to I'm going to really simplify and I'm going to go through and do this. And so then yesterday I have to pull this up because it was so funny. Then yesterday, okay. It wasn't really that funny, by the way. It was kind of <laughs> stupid because I, all you like to do in your life, let me preface this story by saying that you always like to like play stupid tricks and games on people. And so uh, in my mind, this, as you get ready to tell this story, was all just one of your stupid tricks or games. And I'm just like, dude, you're wasting my time right now on a stupid trick or game. Quit pretending, quit playing here. <laughs> Go ahead. 
<laughs> well, first of all, thanks for that setup. What a shining endorsement. <laughs> but this is the truth. I I erased every Sean contact, except I had one of them was just his email. And that's the one I kept. So his phone number was gone. So, you know, nowadays people scam by, they'll text and be like, are we going to hang out or what? And you don't know the number and you know, it's a scam. And so Is yesterday, it? I always say yes and hope that they actually want to hang out. <laughs> well, anyway, you're lonely. Ahead, <laughs> you're lonely. Um, so yesterday at six o'clock, I get this text from Sean and he, well, I didn't know it was Sean cause it was just a random number. Just got done playing, packing up our drive home. I'll holler what I can. <laughs> No, again, I'm like, you scammy motherfuckers. You really try to take me down. Do not mess with this. So I wrote, I see, but who is this? No response. So I'm like, okay, well, that scammer's gone. Well, I told Shannon when that text happened, because we were eating a cheeseburger, I was like, Sadie's playing one of her games right now. She just texted me 10 minutes ago. I answered her question by telling her what I'm doing, and now she doesn't know who I am. It was way, it was earlier than 10 okay, minutes an hour, before but still. No, it was, it was because I did this midday. So I erased your number. Okay. <laughs> so then at 8.57, I get a text, just got home. Again, I'm like, this fucking guy's back. <laughs> okay. You just got home. I said, that's great news. And I'm glad you're safe. <laughs> then Sean writes to me, even though I think it's a scammer. Thanks. Are you wanting to try to do one or not? Now he meant episode, <laughs> but I'm like, what the <laughs> fuck? And I wrote, I really don't know who this is. Like, I don't know who you are. And then you wrote, who are you? <laughs> so then I'm, I'm like done. I'm like, it's too late for this. I'm going to stop answering this person. So then I get like a Facebook message yeah. from Sean. And he's like, <laughs> he's like, can you call me something weird is going on? So then I am like, so dumb sometimes a lot. Um, I'm like, Ooh, Sean's got some gossipy shit. Shit's going down. And then I called him and it dawned on me. Oh my God, I erased your number. And I thought you were trying to scam me for some money. <laughs> but I mean, so if you watch these in real why time, why wouldn't you just say it's Sean? Normally, normally we, well, because I'm assuming that you know it's me and you're playing one of your dumb games. I already told you that. What would be? Or, I'm way no. I'm thinking like the the scammers or hackers have gotten really advanced and they somehow got in my phone and they've changed all the numbers around and messed everything up. And so now Sadie in my phone is a whole different number and I'm texting some random person because they changed the number for you and I'm probably texting a scammer and they're going to send me a link. I'm thinking it's you. I know. I'm going to click on the link. And we both almost memo. didn't even record because we yeah, did so not have each other's info. If you're watching this in real time, Normally, we post these videos in the morning and these audio clips in the morning. And we didn't do that today because Sadie played her games on Dude, accident this time. I didn't know. And we didn't get to record because it was all jacked up and she didn't know who I was all of a sudden. And can I also tell you, first of all, how dare you? And can I also tell you that when I play a prank on somebody or a trick, as you call it, it's way more thought out. I mean, Mystic Joel. You know how long that shit took me to set yeah, up and I make mean, it work? You think that I'm going to go down to the level of it's Sean, but I'm going to pretend I don't know it's Sean. <laughs> I mean, I, I assumed in my mind, and you're not, that wasn't the end of the trick. There was an ulterior motive that was going to come later. I don't know what it was, but in my mind, again, yeah. and then I went to the other side. Okay, maybe she's not tricking me anymore. Maybe something happened and this really isn't her number anymore. And I'm texting some rando. I feel bad. We didn't end up getting to record. So usually we release these early in the morning. And uh, I had to post last night. It'll be here later in the day tomorrow. I don't know. Maybe a new time slot, I guess. We'll see yeah, how it goes with the numbers. But that is the stupid thing that happened to me yesterday. Well, that's pretty stupid. Anyway, what 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 are you doing? How's your life been since my last weekend? 
Yeah. My weekend was busy, dude. So just lots of concerts. It's that time of year. And so, but the, 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 it wasn't even the craziest thing, I guess, that happened this weekend. It was just like scary, I guess, probably less for me than it was for my family. So we were at my hometown. John was hiding. The, I <laughs> what? Threw the Greeley Stampede. And, oh, yeah. uh, I, I'm emceeing all of their concerts this year. And so I have to be on the stage and they've built this new stage that has like all these back rooms and stuff. And so it's not like you're out on an island on this janky old stage like they used to have, which was kind of endearing, by the way. I, like I miss the old janky stage. Like the new yeah. one's really nice. Don't get me wrong, but it's too nice. And I'm like, man, what happened? I agree. Old, but like the one that Tim McGraw's pee pee's probably on. Like not pee pee, but his pee. He <laughs> peed a little bit you? when he was on stage in 1995, and that is cool to me. And now the new he one. He did. Is, um, I don't know. Maybe. Oh, I'm like he whipped it out and peed. Why <laughs> isn't this on his permanent record? <laughs> there were surely kids out there. I mean, okay. Tim was drinking in the 90s pretty heavily, and so he probably just pissed his pants while he was singing Indian Outlaw. I don't know. What I'm getting at is there's a new stage, so I'm but able John's to hide when weather that comes was the through. Golden age. Okay, go and, ahead. And part of my part of my job in doing this is not just to go out and say, here's blah, blah, blah coming out on stage next. It's also when there's bad weather, I have to go out and inform the crowd that the shit's delayed <laughs> and get booed and get things thrown at me, which sucks, but it's part of the job. And so on Friday night of last week, it was a hip hop show. First time I've ever emceed a hip hop show, which I can tell you more about after I tell you this story. But yeah. I'm emceeing the hip hop show. Opening guy gets done and all of a sudden lightning and storms in the area. Uh, so I have to go oh. out and I have to tell everybody, hey, there's lightning in the area. It's getting delayed. Um, so do, but this one. Sorry, sorry to interrupt, but don't you, if there's lightning, you have to wait 30 minutes. Is that the rule? From the last strike. From the last strike. Okay, so go ahead. Yeah, sorry. you get a long time. Uh, anyway, so I, I tell the crowd, and then all of a sudden the storm rolls in, and they, this one was legit. I've been to a lot of shows, and I've been to a lot of shows that have had lightning delays. This is as close as I've ever seen the lightning. Like, it felt, and it looked like there was some strikes that were in this, like the, the general vicinity uh -oh. of this park. Like people are going to get struck by lightning. The weather, they and have. Do you want to die at a, what concert was it? Yeah. T.I. T. Walk, 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 walk a flock of flame and T.I. Yeah, is is that, that where you want to say goodbye? There's people that did, dude, because I'll tell you this. This isn't where this story was going to go, but these people would not leave on the arena floor. They're like, we're here. We're staying. I'm watching this lightning and I'm thinking the same thing. Like, dude. This ain't worth dying for, and these people won't leave. As a matter of fact, at one point, they grabbed the microphone out of my hand. I'm like, who is this guy? And he goes out on stage, and he starts yelling at the crowd. Turns out the Greeley Stampede has their own weatherman. Like, there's a weatherman on site that watches oh. for all these things. And he, at this point, is like, dude, somebody's going to get struck. And so he goes out in, like, weatherman language, like, super scientific. He's like, He's like shut the many... fuck up, everybody. Listen to me. <laughs> there's this many volts in a strike of lightning and if that goes through your body you have no chance at living so don't say i didn't warn you but if you'd like to stay out here you can i would suggest you don't and they still stayed um, <laughs> like no we already bought a beer and <laughs> we're not leaving i mean it's better than dying of cancer i suppose what a cool story to tell when you get to heaven i, I know struck by lightning at a ti concert how'd you die <laughs> I guess it's better than like a Michael Bolton concert or That's something true. horrendous like that. Um, that is scary. I've actually. No, I'm not done. That's okay. the, I haven't even got to the part. Like <laughs> the part, and it's not that good. But my family is all out in this, sitting and, in metal bleachers, right? Yeah, the metal bleachers, and Shannon's frantically calling me. The service is terrible out there, so I yeah. can hear every fifteenth word she says. And she's like, what do we do? Where do we go? And I was like, I don't, I don't have extra passes to bring I'm you to sorry. safety. I'm not coming out there. I, what, do you want me to risk my life to come die with you? What do you want me to do? I, the best thing that you could probably do is get to the truck, but then you also have to walk through a big open. But ceiling. I have the keys, and I'm not walking out to let you oh, in. You have the keys. <laughs> So it, it, we're like yelling at each other and only understanding every 20th word. And so Boone is freaking out at five years old. He thinks he's going to die. And I mean, not that I didn't feel bad for the other three, the other two kids and my wife, but I, I can hear Boone like sobbing in the background. And I was like, dude, I've got to do something. So playing. The I, have to that be I, a am, <laughs> I left my safe confines of this backstage area where I had a couch and all the water that I could possibly drink. 
<laughs> only and I I walked out in white tennis shoes in the mud and I, I unlocked the truck for my family to be safe. <laughs> oh my god, so, I can't believe it. You want to give could... me a medal? Do you have something to a plaque or something? Was Shannon so pissed? God, no, Sean she, as she understood. As, as... Honestly, what are you supposed to do? Like she also didn't really want to leave she wanted to leave the metal bleachers, but she didn't want to walk through the field to get to the truck. It's a really tough spot in, in a situation when the storm like this rolls in really fast. And so it, it was just it was it was kind of a nightmare a scenario for for 10 minutes. But this storm luckily was a small one and it moved for out. Them. And so, but do you want to hear we about my first water ever... on a couch? <laughs> <laughs> I think it wasn't a nightmare for you. It was for them. Well, Sean's sure like, I don't have passes for you. You um, want to know the true story? I don't even, I haven't even told Shannon this because she might be upset by this, but it wasn't my fault that this happened. It wasn't my fault that this luxury just found its way to me. Oh, but I'm starting to walk towards the truck. I'm starting to run, jo kind of jog towards the truck so that I can unlock it so that they can get in and they can be safe. And as I'm kind of jogging along, all of a sudden here comes like a little gator thing, like a little an alligator. Car. No, a cart, a gator cart, <laughs> like a covered nice gator cart that has heater, heaters in it and everything, like radio. It's nice. Uh, it pulls oh, up man. beside me, and it's some kid that I know, and he's like, Sean Patrick. And I was like, hey, buddy. He's like, you need a ride somewhere? It's raining really hard. He's like, yes, I do. <laughs> and so he got me in this gator, and he took me to my truck. I unlocked it, got back in the gator, went back to my couch and my water. <laughs> Okay, well, I would make fun of you more, but I literally thought a baby alligator, that was going to be your story, is they had one back there and you got to fuck with it while your kids were out in the storm. But no, okay, now I get what you're saying. That, Sean, you have like the most exciting weekends. Well, here, I got more about this show, though. Now okay. you want to hear about me emceeing yeah, the hip hop show? So what time did T.I. and Flaka Waka go on? Flaka well, Flaka Waka Flaka was the first Flaka guy. Flaka. He was the opener. He went on yeah. when he was supposed to, got off when he was supposed to. The delay happened in between acts. And so I think T.I. was delayed like 30 minutes. Again, it was a small oh, storm, and so bad. it ended up being fine. It wasn't a big deal. But it was funny in, in between, and I have a story about Waka Flaka that's even better, but in between the, in between the sets where the storm was happening, I'm standing back there and it's weird to me because I come from the country world where these country artists have a tour manager and a stage manager and a sound manager and a hold my water manager. And the, the teams yeah, are crazy. big. There's yeah. so many people that travel in these country music teams. There's, I mean, you see five of them on stage playing in the band. There's another 20 of these guys that travel around with these people. Yeah. It's crazy how many people they are have working. an entour. Like these rappers have entour. No. Right? No, they not these ones. Oh, and so that's don't. what I'm getting at. The country artists, I'm used to like you deal with 45 different people. Oh, okay. The rappers, this is how it went. Both of them. There's the rapper, there's the DJ, and there's the guy that follows them around. That's a tour manager, I guess. I tour manager, security guard, whatever. And so I'm standing backstage just watching this all happen, the storm. And TI's guy, his name is C Rad. And I got to talking to C-Rad a little bit as we're waiting out the storm. And and C-Rad's from the deep part of Atlanta. And he's got a real deep gangster rapper sort of accent. And yeah. we were talking a little bit. But then C-Rad starts talking to the Stampede people. And they're explaining how the weather situation works. And it's 30 minutes from the last lightning strike. And C-Rad's just like very calm, very normal. He's like, he calls T-I-T. -T. He's like, well, T can't be here all night. And they're like, oh. uh, okay, well. We'll, we'll, send him him out. As as, we'll get him on as soon as he can like we got to follow the 30 minute rule and he's like y'all do what you want to do t won't be here all night God dang it I <laughs> and everybody's like rad. trying to i want to see rad in my life to be like she ain't gonna wait all day for this takeout pick <laughs> it up <laughs> That's the amazing. Same people are like trying to figure out what does this mean? Does this mean like he's not going to play if the storm doesn't pass soon? Like he is going to yeah. play. What? And I don't see Rad wasn't explaining himself. He just kept saying, <laughs> like, hey, bitch, he I ain't going to wait for this lightning all night. So y'all get the lightning out of the way so T.I. can play because he ain't going to wait. And so anyway, it, luckily it passed quickly. But Can I uh, say but, that, listen, uh, last year, I only... Rappers usually have a big entourage. Last year, I went to the um, 
shit. The guy sings the apple bottom jeans. Flow rider. Flow rider. Okay, so I went to his show and I went with a group of friends, like all in our 40s, <laughs> white as bread, Tim Niff, fucking Tesla driving motherfuckers. So we go to this show and we do this like backstage thing where he's supposed to come out and we're, we're supposed to interview him and be, and, and I'm like, okay. And so they're like six o'clock. Everyone has to be at this patio because he's going to be there and we don't have a, I'm like, okay. So I get there. All my friends are there and he never showed up, but no one knew except for me and another person. They came and whispered to me, he's not even at DIA yet. <laughs> and I'm like, and I had been there for a little bit. It's and I'd been like, you excited to meet Flo Rida? And people are like, Yeah. So did you have to tell him that he wasn't coming? Finally, um, well, our mutual friend Marcus, who I love, yeah. Marcus, I made him do it. I'm like, Marcus, tell him it's not happening. And he's like, huh? And I'm like, oh shit. Yeah, he's not even at DIA yet. We can't stall for that long. No. And the dude never showed up. And then I don't, he, I don't know. He never showed up. But what's funny about that is he, when uh, we had to bring him up on stage, he had so many people with him. I mean, like probably over 10 entourage people. Okay. Weird. I yeah, know. So, so a, lot, a lot different so, at this one. So one of my friends, I'm not going to call her out by name, but um, we're backstage and I'm like, She's like, is that Flo Rida? Is that him? And I'm like, yeah, I think it is Flo Rida. I mean, I've never seen him up close, nor do I like stare at his picture. So I kind of have a recognition. <laughs> so my white bread ass Tesla driving friend walked up to this guy and was like, I'm a huge <laughs> Flo Rida. And, and it wasn't. It, wasn't. it was just a different African-American guy from that group. And he's like, you dumb ass. <laughs> and uh, that's my story. But the rapper had so many people with him. You want to hear my eat and crow story from the weekend? I yeah. still have to tell you about Waka Flocka. So don't forget to let me go back to this. But because your friend ate crow, this transitions better into me eating crow. <laughs> she turned to look at me and I'm like, a doo -doo. Yeah. I pretended I there's wasn't. nothing worse than being in that situation. And there's Gosh. nothing that you just want to curl up and roll away and of all that you can't because you're there and you just got to stand there. And, take and then it you like seem a, like such an, yeah. such an well, a-hole. Here's how I was an a-hole. So the next night after the rap concert was Chris Young and yeah. Chris, I go back to interview Chris and say hi to Chris. And uh, he, he, first of all, he's in like a bad place because his dad had a major heart attack 100 percent <gasps> blockage in his heart that morning and oh my gosh he's like, he kept telling me i don't even know if i'm supposed to say this but he's like dude i should have canceled the show should have canceled the show should be with my dad in a bad mental spot and i probably should have been like dude do you not want to play my stupid radio game should i just leave because you're in yeah. bad shape and i still forced him to do it and i feel bad about that but uh he's <laughs> he's messed up clearly messed up he Aww. goes out on stage Fast forward, and he was crying, telling the crowd the story, and he, yeah, it was just a bad night for him. His dad's going to be all right, it sounds like, but it happened that morning. And so, anyway, we do my interview, and I play a stupid game with him where I do, like, rapid-fire questions, and he was a champ, and he got through it, and it was good. And then at the end, we're just normal interview style, and his current song that's out on radio right now is called Young Love, Young Love and Saturday Nights, and it has, it's, it's a David Bowie song. It's to the music of a David Bowie song. And okay. um, my dumb ass, I go, so when you want to use the music of somebody like David Bowie, do you get to call David Bowie and ask him if you can do it? And he was like, well, I wish I could, but David Bowie doesn't have He's a phone dead. anymore. Yeah, He's he dead. Died. He's dead. <laughs> That's not as bad as my friend. Oh, no, it, it was bad because... Chris had his security guard, big buff black dude, and he's literally on the side watching this whole thing happen, and he's rolling his eyes at me like, you're the biggest idiot I've ever seen. Oh, so the how did you manager's recover? manager's in the other corner shaking his head like, oh, goodness. Oh, you. no. I was okay, just like, so how did you yeah, recover? I knew, well, then I start like digging, and I was like, I knew, I knew he was dead. I just messed up. I forgot he was dead. And Chris is Which like, is true, oh, right? 
Oh, yeah, did you I mean, not know so at all? He I knew was he was Kyle? dead. I, I knew he was dead, but I didn't think of it in that moment. He could have played along and he would have been like, oh, yeah, I called him up and talked to him last night and been a real dick about it. And and I probably would have been like, oh, cool, bunny. Ha ha. I know, Not but he wasn't that, in that. I forgot like, that he died. Dad, I forgot that he died. I, and his dad had the heart attack in the morning and then the David yeah. Bowie death thing. It pro He was probably just taken aback by your you rudeness. Could, <laughs> You can actually see the video. I posted it on, on my radio station page and I cut that whole part off. All you see, all you see in the video is I was gonna the game, say I'm gonna the silly the silly game and it cuts off. <laughs> it doesn't none of the David Bowie stuff is on there. So I bad. don't think that's that big of a mistake. I mean, sure you were in front of an artist and how many people were there watching you? His tour manager, his so it was just like a private and the guy that was filming it. Okay, so it's just a private thing. You weren't in front of like a bunch of people. No, it was fine, but he's probably always going to remember Sean from Denver as the guy that doesn't know David Bowie's dead. <laughs> no, I don't think that's bad. Anyway, all right. So my Waka Flocka story before we yes. end the thing today, because this was kind of funny too. This is the same night, by the way, where Boone, my five-year-old, is scared of the lightning storm. He's never been to a hip hop show. I've been to two in my life. This is the first time I've emceed one. And so I was telling the story before the show started to my family because um, it was kind of funny. I had heard that Waka Flocka doesn't get there before like 10 or 15 minutes before the show because the rumor is he has to fly private because he has to pack and he, he oh, can't carry a gun on it. And so he flies in private to these shows so that he can carry his gun and he's not going to be there before 15 minutes. So they were telling me this because they're like, if his flight gets a little delayed or he can't get through traffic to get here, he's cutting it really close. So pay attention because your your intro might get delayed. And yeah. so I intro him. I'm walking off the stage and his DJ standing right there wearing like a black suit coat sort of thing. And he opens it up and he's like, don't tell anybody. And there's a pistol in there, a pink <laughs> pistol. He and like, oh, Sean, don't, being don't. the most white bread dude in the world, was also like, what? I was like, oh, well, all right. And walked, <laughs> I was going to walk away. And he's like, Congratulations, dude, Congratulations, sir. You want to shoot it? What? <laughs> and so he pulls his pink pistol out and he points it to the sky. And we're in the stage and he, bam, and, but it doesn't shoot. And he's it, like, I was going to say, it's, it wasn't real. <laughs> There's no way. He, he's like, you hold it, dude. It's plastic. He's like, it's a fidget toy. He's like, mess with it. And so I'm Sean was, I'm Sean was already <laughs> crying. He was so shaken. He was terrified. The guy's I'm like, shooting uh, this plastic pink pistol into the sky. And I'm sure <laughs> anybody that was standing there watching is like, what the fuck is going on right now? And so I go out into the crowd. And now Boone's watching this hip hop show, which is a whole different world than anything he's ever seen. And I'm telling Shannon and Boone's overhearing and Boone in his five-year-old mind can't comprehend that it was fake. And so he, I could see his, his face go white as a ghost. And he, he was scared the whole time because he thought that this dude had a pistol and was going to shoot it. And he was scared because he didn't understand the whole thing. And then the lightning, I, I'm sure I took three or four years off of poor little Boone's life because it was just a traumatic night for him. But this Waka Flocka guy, he gets on stage and he jumps off the stage instantly. He goes out into the crowd like as far back as he can. No security. Stampede security didn't know this was going to happen. And he's just wandering around the crowd for 20 minutes. Just spit all over. For <laughs> 20 down, minutes. <laughs> I'm excited. For 20 minutes, this guy is, they're playing his music. He didn't, he's taking selfies with everybody. He's got big dreads and he's just like head banging and hairs but going he didn't everywhere. Sing a song? He for 20 minutes he did not put that microphone to his mouth for 20 <laughs> minutes. And I think he only played for 35. After 20, I left because I had other things to do. I it's have to tell you, crazy. I, that Flow Rider show was probably the funnest concert I've ever been to. We were just we dance. I mean, they're really hip hop shows are really, really fun to go to. Yeah, they're high energy, but they're so if you're high going energy. For the, if you're going for the art of somebody actually performing for you, you're going to the wrong thing because these folks are not performing. Yeah, <laughs> they're not. They're they're performing in different ways, but they're not singing. They're not rapping. They're not. It's all recorded, and they're just there to dance and hang out and party. <laughs> I want that job. Uh, let's cut it off there because we are out of time. Thank you so much for listening to Sadie and Sean Have No Friends. Be sure to subscribe 
and comment and like and uh, do all those things. We would really appreciate it. Even though after every episode, I'm like, that sounded bad. I should not have said that. Uh, but thank you for sticking with us. And we also want to thank our show sponsors at Christiana Salon and Spa. Uh, you can get 10% off a treatment there just by saying Sadie and Sean have no friends. Um, so go in and get something done, whether it's a massage or a facial. And then finally, the pet of the week is so cute. It's like a little poodle mix. If you're watching, I'll post a video or a picture. And uh, the poodle's name is Khaleesi. The pet of the week, we go through my second home adoption and Can you um, change the name or are you stuck with the name because that's a dumb name <laughs> well it's clearly a game of thrones did you ever watch game of thrones no, that's why oh, okay well that's movie. like the the main girl in game of thrones oh. uh but it's a little it's so cute this picture um and it's all brought to us by the wonderful folks at casey's pest control services call him oh my god there was a moth in our house the other day it was like a bird I was like, I'm out of here. Light it on fire. Casey's pest control. I said, I text Casey. I said, Casey, <laughs> get your ass over here. <laughs> anyway, I digress. Thank you so much for listening. And we'll catch you tomorrow at the right time. The Sean. Correct time. We're back to normal, regular, red, regularly scheduled programming. Say that five times fast. I talk for a living. Okay, bye. <laughs>